This week on Visual Effects Artists React. <laughs> oh, what? We got a cool water croc scene. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. We got the Born Ultimatum. This movie's getting really old, but there's still one shot that's incredible. What? No. Sam has a clip today that he showed us. We thought we had it. It was a trap. Oh my oh, no! god. No! <laughs> no! Holy. Wait! <laughs> We got the new Super Mario Bros. movie coming out, and I think it's time we take a look at that. God, what a perfect time to revisit the old Mario movie. You have no idea how important that movie is to modern visual effects. Someone started all of this. And I'm gonna find them. We were going right into the Bourne Ultimatum. We were going straight into the Bourne. The Bourne Ultimatum. The Bourne Ultimatum. The Bourne Ultimatum. <laughs> <laughs> There's a famous scene here. I think we all remember oh, yeah. the shot. The jump through the window. Look at him go. Whee! Sweet. Pretty oh, rad. Sweet, quick little shot. Yeah, I would have liked to see that shot be a little bit longer, but it's a pretty sweet shot. Yeah, <laughs> for taking up 0.0000001% of this film, <laughs> it sure has a big impact. <laughs> so, how do you think this shot was done? Um, so I think they had little tiny buildings and little tiny men. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. They had a stuntman jump across the balcony with another stuntman behind him on a wire carrying the camera. But the stuntman behind him with the camera was on a dead man, so it stops him from going through the window and hitting the wall. And the other guy actually has to go all the way through. That's actually exactly it. That's exactly how they pulled off the filming of this shot. For safety, they didn't actually have real glass there, so the glass window was fully CG. But I think the CG glass is like pretty dang good. Like we see the reflection of the building behind the camera. That's what jumps out to you, right? But we're also in a world of invisible effects. Oh. What else was done to the shot? I bet I know what it is. There's okay. no interior to an apartment like that, because that's a set that they had to film somewhere else. So that whole dressed apartment, there's probably like crash pads in there and people are gonna catch them and everything. That's and, very yeah. true, exactly. There's more than that, though. Oh, the damn. entire <laughs> exterior of the building. What? No. But that would mean that everything that's cool about the shot stops, be <laughs> stops becoming cool. No, okay, no, no. It is still cool. You guys are asking the right question. Like, why would you do this if you're just going to replace the exterior facade? But it's not that they're replacing it, they're extending it. Mm -hmm. And it's not CG, it's a matte painting. And then that gets tracked in 3D space in a technique that is called 2.5D. Yeah. It's the act of getting like 3D moving stuff without having to like fully like CG render it all. So Basically a big like flat plane that's moving around that's a picture, right? Exactly, yeah. The downside is that you don't get any sort of realistic lighting or shadows or anything like that. But in a lot of cases, this one namely, it's really not necessary to do more than that because we're not getting big sweeping lighting changes. It's just the camera's moving through space a little bit. Now the shutters next to the window, those are fully CG. The window is obviously full CG, but the building itself is so close to being the same as the original shot, it's just extended. Yeah. And you can actually go through and with like Photoshop or painting, you just create that from scratch to match it as is, and then the motion all just works. But I'll be honest, I feel like they could have probably just done this in a backyard and gotten it to look just as good. At no, that point. it would have taken a lot more work if they tried to do that. This, the mere fact that they yeah. shot this on location already gives them so much reference for what they needed. It takes them most of the way there, period. Well, it does another thing too. It forces the visual effects to be at least as good as the elements that are real in the show. Yes, shot. which is yeah. important. That's very yeah. important. You can't half ass it then. You can't be like, well, we tried. It's like, it either works or it doesn't, you know? Jason Bourne doesn't just jump into windows, he also likes to disappear right in front of your very eyes. And we decided to put the Jason Bourne disappearing act to the test against unsuspecting people who had no idea that we were going to do it. There's a lot of literal moving parts here. Did we blow their minds? Do they think we actually disappeared? <laughs> what the what? You can watch it right now on CorridorDigital.com or tomorrow on Corridor Crew. So subscribe if you aren't. Jason Bourne, out. All right, guys. All right, guys. <laughs> what are we in Buckle for? Buckle up, guys. Buckling up. So I don't know the name of this movie. It's a Chinese movie, and it's insane. It's insane. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, uh, this is great. I love it when. Wait. Ooh, this is okay. A, let's go. Like let's light. go. Ooh. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this water compositing. Wow. 
This is rad. I love the camera work. It's like the right type of kinetic camera work. This is intense. This is like Bollywood Chinese alligator fighting. Yeah, this is Revenant with crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Bonk. <laughs> <laughs> it was straight up just a bonk. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, that did that gator it just, just drift? Drift? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, croc. It's a croc, not a gator. Oh yeah. Oh, the tooth knock. I also like how his whole upper jaw just like shifts sideways when he gets hit by the rock. It's like his jaw also broke. Just, all that water, all water. water. <laughs> but it's hitting him. Yeah. So he's holding something up that has a bunch of water. It's like a big bag that they Yeah, like... you can see the mask on it actually, yeah. just to the left of his head there. Wow, what a shot right there. They're all really tricky shots. There's a few shots that you're like, okay, obviously this is CG, but a lot of them I'm just like, was that practical? I mean, I feel like they're like in a bunch of these shots like dragging a big bag of weights around in the water still. Well, clearly like the crocodiles are CG, but something's got to be like splashing in in the water here and there. I know they have some CG splashes, but like, so he body slams a crocodile, that splash, that looks like a real splash to me. I mean, obviously he's splashing. Okay, guess, if you yeah. look carefully, a lot of the splashes from the gator don't actually hit the water. Yeah, you're right. It's like there's a little bit of local splash where he's coming out, but all the water that's being thrown outwards yeah, that should on be left. splashing on the water again is just kind of like fading into nothing. There's no ripple from it. Yeah, and then the water here. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, you can see that it's coming out of like a cut or a slit in like a bag too. Because you don't really see the water flowing down off of its back. That's the thing. It just kind of looks like it's spawning as it's dropping. But it also matches the real actual water that's flowing down him, so it still works as a shot for me. But still, like, what a great way to set up that shot because it sells it so that, well. That lens flare was like, yeah. that had to have been added because it was over the top of the gator. There's a huge array of different techniques that you can do in visual effects, you know? This is a great example of just a few of those things working together really, really well. First of all, they have an incredibly high detail crocodile model. Like this yeah. model is really good. The animation that they're doing with the model is great. Secondly, Someone's really good at water simulations. <laughs> Those two things working together with the third thing, which is the on-set VFX supervising. The best examples of that are when the VFX supervisor and the director and the cinematographer, they all really pow out together to make sure that each shot works the best for what they're trying to achieve. And I think here is a great example of that. Obviously to tie it all together, the unsung hero of all visual effects, compositing. And it's all just enough to make you go, all right, I'm having fun watching this obviously not real crocodile fight because you don't fight crocs, you die. <laughs> I think you could fight a gator, but I think a croc might overpower you. Dude, the thing that scares me about the crocs is that they'll just grab onto you and then just start doing that spin move that uh, he was doing back on him. Well, see, that's why he beat it, because he did his own move against him. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, we don't often look at Chinese cinema, but obviously there's a lot going on here that's worth taking a look at. So if you have any suggestions for some Chinese movies we can look at with some insane visual effects, leave a comment down below. We'll check it out and perhaps look at it next time. You want to see a really wacky clip too? I got a wacky clip. Oh. It's so clean. So clean. Feels like oddly CG. Yeah, I, I first, like the opening shot there, I was like, oh yeah, this is a fully CG shot. But then the people were real. Just wait. Yeah. Whoa. It was CG. Oh, is she growing up? Oh, oh. dude. Oh man, she doesn't need his help anymore. Yeah, it's sad, she's growing oh, up. Oh no! Are they wow. changing actors? Oh, well, he's getting like kind of older. <laughs> yeah, getting kind of older. Oh, uh, now she's no longer a rebellious teenager and she likes her dad again. Or does she? Oh, wow. Wait. Wow. Wow. That was phenomenal. Isn't that crazy? And what a poignant Japanese commercial for a train. I know, right? I'm like, <laughs> trains are like so deep. <laughs> and like, what the experiences we have on trains. Like, I'll never forget them. Like, bravo. It's like, I'm going to go ride a train. So you guys were like, all right, it's very CG. Tell me more. How do you do a commercial like this? This is like green screen and motion tracking, for sure. Like that background, 100% CG. 
but it's just the light coming through the windows is like worked out to line up with the light hitting the guy. If he's standing in a window, they have light on him. And if he's standing in shade, there's no light on him. They must have known where they were and like planned it accordingly. Now the train isn't actually built like a real train right now. It's segmented into pieces that are like just five, six feet long, as opposed to a full train car length. So obviously the people are real here. And the question is, how do you film them in such a way that we have a unified camera move with all of these real people? The way you do that is with motion control, whether through just like a dolly that can do the same repeated move over and over again, or a robot arm, which I'm hoping to experiment with soon. Subscribe for the robot arm. Subscribe, subscribe for robot arms. <laughs> <laughs> So the camera like starts with the actors on either side of the camera and pulls out to reveal them. And I think it pulls back to a certain point and kind of stops and then costume change, actor change, just over and over and over again with the same lighting, same camera move. And that's when those people are now just 2D cards in the 3D render. And they're just kind of like tracked in and continuing to get smaller. The reason I specifically like this on another level above just like the execution is because this whole thing is like a trick. If you're a VFX artist, Wait it a is a trap. Wait a minute. It is a trap. It's not CG, is it? All the stuff that you really think is CG and they're doing the, the CG tricks to accomplish, they're not. And you should just watch the behind the scenes on this because- No way. It, it's, it, is, it is like one Wait. of the, this is why it's a trap. Wait. It's a trap. You're, as a VFX Wait. artist, you're like, oh yes, this is the technique they would use <laughs> to do that. And then they're like, oh yeah? Watch this slam dunk of a behind the scenes. Oh my oh, no! god! No! Holy Wait. shit! <laughs> Wait! Wow! Oh my god! Dude, the I was convinced this was motion control. <laughs> no, it's just a hundred people! This is one of those pieces where it truly takes a very talented team to put it together. The only way this works is if every single person involved on it is at like a hundred percent there's so many little pieces that could technically go wrong on it and requires this flawless like team execution yeah. to accomplish. There's more coordination than this than the vast majority of like TV shows well, these I mean, days and movies for that what, matter. Exactly. What yeah. blows me away is how many people they have working on this one shot right here, all like on set right now. You know, all of those little things sliding back and forth. If this was done on a more modern movie, you know, they probably would have just hooked up all of those little slides to like pneumatic actuators hooked yeah. up to like a program so that like they could all go exactly. Instead, they have one person for every single slide just pushing it. You know what's crazy to me is that they're like, we're gonna do it for real. So we're gonna have to have this really long set. We're gonna have to make the train bend. It's like, that's great. It's like, what about the lighting? It's like, oh yeah, we need to have our shadows go across all the actors. Like, the fact that they have these tracks that are running these shadows all the way down the set, like what a commitment to like getting the shot. This is a banger, Sam. I, I'm this blown is a banger. away. Yeah, I, no well, kidding. I, you know, this is the coolest thing I've seen all day. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna. I, well, I gotta give some credit. I was sent a message by a viewer with this commercial, and it was so mind blowing that I had to share it. So yeah, thanks, Nick. It worked. <laughs> so you guys know there's a big movie dropping, right? Worldwide phenomenon. <gasps> Yes, the it new comes Mario out Brothers tomorrow. movie. I'm oh, so excited. I can't wait to see. So I managed to uh, to find a copy of the movie. No, how did you wait? You got it early? Yeah, I, I heard about this. Yeah, we're under like a few <laughs> NDAs, I think. <laughs> yeah, I figured we'd take a look at it and do some uh, reacts to the effects. Okay, but it's all effects. So here we are. There's Mario and Luigi. Trust me, I got a good feeling about this, Sally, but I don't know. Wait, is this, Wait is this Mid Journey? Mid. <laughs> is this, is this like Wait, this? did somebody do a, a Mid Journey early 90s version of the Mario movie? Wait, yeah. I see what you're doing <laughs> Wait, here. 1980s dark fantasy Mario Brothers movie, photorealistic. Uh, starring Bob Hoskins and John Luisiamo. <laughs> John Luisiana. <laughs> John Luisiana. <laughs> So this is obviously the original Super Mario Bros. movie that yes. came out in the early 90s? 1993. Forget it, rock! Look down there! Whoa, wait, hold up. I don't know why, but part of me assumed there wasn't any, like, visual effects in this original movie. So this movie, actually, I got a lot of facts to blow your mind about this movie. This movie is nuts, what, like, what was going on with this movie. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, let's Whoa, go, baby. Yeah. Whoa. Heck yeah. Wait, wait. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> wait, how are they spinning that dude? Is he on wires? Is he just... Have you oh, yeah. seen Lawnmower Man? I think it was a very similar thing. All right, this movie is insanity and looks nothing like the Mario universe whatsoever. Koopa Square. 
But the set design is insanity. I mean, there's obviously a lot of effort that went into the set design. You're right. You know, like the, there's a weird. This is a weird point in time, like of 1990 to 1994. There's like Judge Dredd and Demolition Man and Super Mario. Like this set is like almost the same set in all these films. It's like gritty street cyberpunk vibes. Oh man, imagine if they made the Super Mario World at Universal Studios like this. <laughs> <laughs> you just have like one room dedicated, dedicated to this. To this, version. This, is, this yeah, it's all catwalks and scaffolding and sparks. <laughs> and like electrical cars. <laughs> and like a bunch of like street punks walking around with wacky goggles. <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, you're like, this? This is what you've been working on? <laughs> wow. wow. Very strange. It's like particular <laughs> 1.0. Wait, that, I mean, that's actually like, yeah, this is actually kind of well done. It's actually extremely impressive for the time and the tech, and we'll get into that. We'll explain why. Because the gun was evaporating in front of him, so the gun had to be added, and then all the particles are inheriting the color of Having the, the track, image. Having the all that on there, too. It's not overly hard to do today, but I can't imagine trying to do that 30 years ago. I'm gonna make a monkey out of you, plumber. Trust the fungus. And there's oh. the mushroom making things bigger. It's very forced <laughs> into the story. Oh. Whoa. Wait. Whoa. Wait, what? Whoa. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh okay. Nice. That was actually kind of cool. cool. That was pretty cool. That was kind of cool. Wait, did, who, who did the effects for this? Was it ILM? No. So there is a crazy story to all the VFX in this. Okay, so get this. So only ILM has access to be able to scan film into computers. Nobody else can do this, so if you want to do visual effects, you gotta do it the old-fashioned way. And so they're like, look, Kodak, I know you've been working on something for a while. Let's do it, and Kodak's fine. You guys can be the very first film to use the Kodak Cineon scanner. So this is the very first film to be scanned using Kodak's Cineon scanner, which is like the industry standard. And they're like, okay, cool, we can digitize these. Now what do we do? What tools are out there? And so he's like, excuse me, I've been working on this thing called Flame. It's not done yet. And this is the very first movie to use Flame, which is like one of the original compositing programs. So they start working on it and they're like, huh, this is weird. The shots don't look right. They look very flat and washed out. And they're like, wait, uh -oh. this is logarithmic footage. We need to invent something that can change it into your 8-bit linear. Let's call it a lookup table. <laughs> So you're literally looking at the birth of full industry of like visual effects wow. kind of with this film, with digital visual effects. Like ILM's doing their own thing with their own tools. But they're all doing it in-house. Yeah, and no one else is getting to touch those yeah, tools. Proprietary. And then these guys are like, well, let's start making some tools for everybody. And then you're starting to see that stuff come out here. All the particles you saw is basically somebody like hand coding all of those. Like some really talented person they brought in. I think his name was Kevin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they had these cool tools where like, you could paint like a paint stroke and like the particles would follow it. So that's how you'd animate is you just oh. you'd paint a line and how you painted it and the speed you painted it would like be how it, how it moved. I did notice there was one where it was like kind of swirling a little bit. So it was probably just some dude with the, or this Kevin guy just with yeah. the pencil going like, yeah. That's amazing to think about how this movie is actually, it is the foundation of modern visual effects. Yeah. This film paved the way for people like ourselves and every other film out there today. Yeah. I did not expect to learn that today. Yeah, this is like a groundbreaking, it was actually nominated for an Academy Award for visual effects. Without? And it lost to Jurassic Park. <laughs> uh. All right, so I feel like having now watched all of the original Mario's movie stuff, I think it, we just, we gotta do it, right? We gotta yeah. look at the trailer let's for the new Mario let's movie. Let's some contrast here. The new Mario movie isn't out yet. It probably will be by the time you're watching this, but we haven't seen the full movie yet, and I'm very excited for it. Where am I? Hey, I recognize these characters. I know who that hey, is. Hey, wait, that's not John Le Leguizamo, Louisiana. John Louisiana. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce his name. This feels like I'm watching like a cinematic from one of the Mario games. It's Blur like Studio, cinematic. cinematic, remastered Mario 64. <laughs> we will destroy the Mushroom Kingdom! Yeah! But this movie, like, the aesthetic of it, yeah. I love. The characters are true to form. They're like slightly exaggerated versions of their video game counterparts, but they're able to nail that sort of like full CG vibe. You know the thing that I feel like they're doing really well? Is they're making Mario and all these characters look like the renders that you saw on like in print and advertisements. Yeah. You know, basically Actually, all the up till now. Yeah. It's like when you see like Mario at the beginning of Mario of Kart 8 and it's like the nice fully rendered Mario, it's like, yeah. this looks like that. And like Nintendo's had that style dialed in since Super Mario 64. Illumination took that look and just elevated it a little bit, but it feels like you're looking at that. 
it's kind of nice to not have somebody feel like they need to reinvent this stuff. It's like, oh, this beloved franchise? Let me put a little twist on it. Let me put my little twist on it. Because, you know, that way we can access bigger audiences. It's like, no! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> just go make Mario or whatever it is you're doing. I think you nailed it on the head. It's like, they were just trying to do the cover art that yeah. we've been watching for decades at this point. It has a way of staying true to what you expect it to look like while still surpassing my expectations on how good it can look. But that hair simulation on his mustache? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm. I feel like I can touch it. So do you think this Mario movie can succeed where the original Mario movie failed? Honestly, this is probably gonna just blow the first Mario movie out of the water, let's be real. This is gonna go gangbusters. Yeah. Kids are gonna love it. Kids are gonna be peeing their pants, screaming. They'll be going crazy. They're gonna sell so many Game Boys after this movie comes out. <laughs> yeah, Wii U's will be flying off the shelves. <laughs> the Wii U. Wii U. Wii U. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for this movie. I can't wait to watch it. So, yeah, uh, so you can subscribe on YouTube here, but if you subscribe over here on the website, it's kind of cooler, plus the episodes are longer and have way more cool things in it. So, you know, choose one, but you have to make a choice quick. <laughs> Dude, Rail Talk, there's a lot of great visual effects discussions happening here. Check it out on the website.